Good morning everybody. Uh, today I will be taking up a very important aspect of continuous casting. This is known as secondary cooling. You know that uh, in mold basically what you are doing is you are cooling the liquid steel which has just been poured from the tan dish to the mold. So, that is called mold cooling is called primary cooling. So, the first cooling is done in the mold. Then when the strand is coming out of the mold just coming out the mold then also it require cooling because it is not the solidification is not yet complete only certain you know thickness of the shell has been formed inside the shell there is liquid steel as well. So, what is important is to continue the cooling now how do you do the cooling of course, it is done by air or air mist, but this is called secondary cooling because this is not inside the mold but it is below the mold. So, this is called secondary cooling. So, today I will be talking about what is the importance of secondary cooling as far as the quality of the steel cast which is being cast in the form of maybe slab or bloom or billet or round in whichever shape it can be cast. So, the quality of that depends to a large extent on secondary cooling. How you are cooling, how uniform is the cooling, whether there is any problem in cooling, what is the intensity of cooling, uniformity of cooling, everything is important. So, today I will be talking of that. Now, let us look at the layout of a continuous casting shop. Some of you must have seen and all of you possibly know what are the different units, but just I want to highlight the secondary cooling part of it, how it is done, the strand cooling we call it, how it is done. So, the, from the ladle liquid steel is coming inside the tan dish. So, there is a tan dish card which can move and then in the tan dish you have liquid steel. So, there is a requirement of tan dish so that you know the cleanliness is uh, maintained, further cleanliness is enhanced and it is it does not deteriorate in the tan dish. Now, from tan dish through sub entry nozzle liquid steel is coming inside the mold. It may be slab, it may be bloom, it may be billet, it may be round anything the mold shape depends on the final shape of the casting. Now, from mold within mold I have told you liquid steel is there uh, initially before the uh, casting starts initially the dummy bar is put inside it and then you pour the liquid steel from tan dish inside the mold through sub entry nozzle and then when the mold is mold is full then the dummy bar is slowly taken out from the bottom of the mold. So, then only the casting is starting. So, what is happening is the liquid steel which is inside the mold is getting cooled by the water cooled mold. So, the shell thickness will slowly start increasing and when the shell has or the strand has come out of the mold just below the mold it should have sufficient thickness. So, that it can withstand the ferrostatic pressure is it not? If the ferrostatic pressure it cannot withstand then the shell will be ruptured and there will be breakout it is a catastrophe we do not want. So, we have to take care of how much should be the mold cooling what is the type of casting powder it is being used, what is the type of steel it dep everything depends on that I have discussed those issues. Now, let us come to the segments that means, the secondary cooling part which is below the mold just below the mold. When the strand is coming out of the mold what is there? There are rolls for support because the mold itself supports the strand or the shell but when the strand is coming out of the mold the ferrostatic pressure will try to bulge the shell because the shell is very thin when it is just coming out of the mold. So, there is a possibility of bulging for support we must have supporting rolls those rolls are start those rolls start existence of the roll start just below the mold. So, this portion is called the segment that means, just below the mold mold is somewhere here yeah just below the mold you have different segments which support the rolls and in between the rolls 
you have arrangement for cooling of the strand, this is very important. There will be rolls one after another, but these rolls are not touching each other, there is gap between the rolls, subsequent rolls, consequent rolls. In between these rolls, there is provision for nozzle, placement of nozzle through which you can put water and if for air mist cooling, you can put water and air both mixture of that. So, what is important is in the segment, these are the segments. So, in the secondary cooling, how do you do secondary cooling? With the help of water or air mist. So, how where from water is coming? Water is coming through nozzles which are placed between the different rolls, supporting rolls. I will come to it in details subsequently, but this is just to show below the mold, the segment is there, this is the segment. Naturally, there is a curvature in the segment because the strand is coming out vertically from the mold and finally, you have to make it horizontal, is it not? This is the horizontal because you have to cut the cast products and all, finally, you have to discharge them. So, the, those are the subsequent requirements. So, from the vertical position, you have to make it horizontal. So, how can you make it? If you have a vertical mold, then the strand is coming out also vertically. The first you have to bend the mold, so there is a bender. This is the bender location here. So, some bending is there, suddenly it is not bent, the strand it is slowly there is a bending because to take care of the strain, strain should not be very high, strain rate should not be very high, slowly the strand is bent and then finally, subsequently there are different segments, different rolls, different cooling and when you want to make it horizontal before that you have to straighten it because if you do not straighten then the strand will go on in this circular fashion because there is a bend depending on the radius it will go on. So, you, you do not want that you want to make it horizontal. So, first you have to bend it and then you have to straighten it and I have told you if you have a carved mold then you do not require any bending. The strand which is coming out is already in a curved way it is coming out because the mold is curved and you require only a straightener. So, straightener is common in all sorts of casters whether it is a straight mold or a curved mold straightener is common, but what is different here is if you have a straight mold you need a bender, but if you have a curved mold you do not need a bender. So, in the strand when it is coming out getting solidified it is coming down through these segments, these are called segments, different rolls are there in between there is arrangement for cooling. So, everything together is called segments, there are different segments I will come to it later on. So, I have tried to explain that when the solidifying strand is coming out of the mold for support you have rolls and in between the rolls you have cooling, facility for cooling you have nozzles both for you know water as well as air if you want you need a air mist. If you have normal air uh, water cooling they have just water nozzles. So, it is very much necessary to cool the strand to increase the thickness of the solidifying shell till the solidification is complete. So, this portion of cooling is called secondary cooling here cooling is done by water or air mist with the help of nozzles. So, this is very important to remember. Now, let us see how the segments look like. So, the, these are the different segments and the different, different cooling zones. So, let us see first what is happening. You see the mold is here, I am just not showing the mold, mold is somewhere here. So, the strand is coming out here. So, to support it you require lot of rolls and in between the rolls you have arrangement for cooling. So, first there is a ring arrangement, it is called ring cooling and then ring cooling is basically just beneath the mold, okay, just below the mold you have a ring cooling facility and then you also have facility for cooling the narrow sides. Suppose you are cooling a slab, the most of the cooling is done on the broad side on the broad faces, 
but there is also some cooling necessary on the narrow sides. This is true more true for blooms or billets naturally those have to be cooled equally or depending on the area of the surfaces the narrow surfaces also need cooling. So, this is for the slab caster also there is arrangement for narrow side cooling just below the mold. So, this is very important to remember and then you have different zones it is called zone 1, zone 2, zone 3 like that it is increasing till it has become horizontal. So, there is a facility for cooling. Now, here you are mentioning that short zones prior to unbending or straightening give better control of surface temperature. What is the purpose of you know secondary cooling? Please remember we are doing secondary cooling to extract heat from the strand because the, the central portion of the strand is liquid. When it has the strand has come out of the mold only a certain portion of the shell has formed rest of it inside the strand is liquid steel. <coughs> so, cooling is necessary. So, for that secondary cooling just below the mold is essential to extract heat to increase the shell thickness and finally, the shell from the different sides will come and meet and then only the solidification is complete. Otherwise, you have to take recourse to cooling with the help of water and sometimes water and air both combined together <coughs> which is called mist cooling. So, this is done with the help of I have told you nozzles I will come to it slowly to give you show it to you how nozzles are used for cooling. But first what I am showing now to you is how the different segments, segments are placed they are naturally not either vertical or horizontal initially vertical and then there is a curvature and then finally, it is made horizontal with the help of a straightener. And if initially if it is vertical if you have a vertical mold that means, the strand is coming out of it in a vertical fashion then also you need a bender that is what is important. So, what is important is you have different segments that means, the roll support rolls and the cooling arrangements they are arranged or arrayed in different zones. It is not a single zone different zones that is helpful because you know you can increase the water you can control the water in different zones depending on how much you know cooling you need. So, that is very important to remember. Now, let us see the same segment arrange, arrangement in a slightly larger picture. So, again what I had told you the mold the mold is somewhere here just below the mold you have a ring arrangement I have mentioned earlier and then you have the cooling arrangement for the narrow side of the slab and then subsequently we have cooling arrangement for the broad faces. These are the rolls and you have in between the rolls you have arrangement for cooling. So, different segments starting from 1 it goes down to 9. So, when it has become totally you know um, horizontal that means, the solidification is complete then only it becomes solid you know horizontal and you can cut the cast strand or the cast slab or bloom or billet depending on the requirement of length, but this is the final segment is 9. So, it has started from 1 different segments and finally, 9. Now, let us see how the water space are falling on the strand this is very important to remember. So, what secondary cooling what is the purpose of secondary cooling? The purpose is to have the shell temperature we should go down from the top when it is coming up to the mold the shell temperature is something when it becomes horizontal that means, when the solidification is complete naturally the shell temperature is coming down. So, this distribution of temperature from the top to the bottom in the secondary cooling zone it is achieved or accomplished with the help of 
cooling this is called secondary cooling. So, this secondary cooling is very important as I am repeating again and again because it controls the quality of the strand. There should not be too much of strain or stress generation in the strand there may be a problem of cracking. So, the temperature should uniformly come down in a systematic way it should come down there should not be sudden increase or decrease of temperature. So, that is very important to remember. Now, let us see how it is done. So, this is a turn dish from turn dish through sub entry nozzle liquid steel is coming inside the mold. So, initially the filling of the mold is done with when the you know dummy bar is there this is the location of the dummy bar. Once the initial filling is done then you try to pull the dummy bar down along the mold towards the bottom and the casting starts. And then when the strand has come below the mold in contact with the dummy body the strand is also coming down. So, the shell has started solidifying inside the mold it is slight slowly increasing in thickness when it comes just below the mold out of the mold it should have sufficient thickness to withstand the ferrostatic pressure again I, again I am repeating this otherwise there will be a breakout. So, okay. it has just come out of the mold. So, what is the arrangement below the mold you see the supporting rolls this is the supporting rolls another supporting roll is there in between there is a gap and within this gap you have water nozzles through which you are spraying water on the strand. So, the role of the nozzle is to allow water to get spread on the strand. So, you see there are different rows one after another both sides different sides and in between the rows there is arrangement for nozzles through which water is getting spread on the strand. The strand surface is getting cooled with the help of water which are being spread through nozzles this is very important. So, all this blue these are water nozzles. So, this location is the location of this nozzle through which water is being sprayed this blue is the water spray which is coming and forming the jet is coming and impinging on the surface of the strand. So, it is getting cooled the surface is getting cooled inside is also slowly getting cooled with the help of this secondary cooling this is the arrangement of secondary cooling. Now, as you are going down initially you have liquid core and then finally, solidification will be complete after certain depth at a certain depth. Then you have drive rolls initially the strand is pulled down with the help of dummy bar and its head dummy bar head is this and it is being pulled down along the segments. But then after it has the strand has come down then also you have drive rolls which will allow the strand to come down that means is it is allowing the it is driving the strand to come down further. So, there are drive rolls. Now, let us look at the temperature distribution and the inside core and things like the shell things like that. So, as I have told you this yellow is molten steel the red indicates shell solid shell. So, solid when the strand has come out of the mold the solid shell thickness is not much, but it should be sufficient to withstand the ferrostatic pressure where from ferrostatic pressure is coming because the whole thing is liquid here because it is liquid till solidification ends that means, till the point of final solidification there is a ferrostatic force. So, this ferrostatic pressure increases as you are going down till the solidification is complete and it increases how does it increase? It increases with height. So, density into height that is the pressure density of molten steel into height. So, as you are going down the ferrostatic pressure is increasing till it becomes 0 at the point of solidification after that there is no ferrostatic pressure, but just before 
solidification is complete that means still liquid core is there ferrostatic pressure is there and it is only increasing till the final point. So, what this ferrostatic pressure will do? Because inside the mold ferrostatic pressure was pushing the shell towards the mold, the support was the mold. When it is when the strand has come out of the mold, what is the support? Support that is why rolls are necessary. These are the support rolls which will these are the support rolls which will give support to the strand which is getting solidified. So, these are the support rolls. The support rolls in between the support rolls there is a possibility of shell bulging because ferrostatic pressure is there here the roll is there to support here also there is roll in between the rolls there is a possibility of bulging and in between this the rolls you are doing spraying water with the help of nozzles. So, the cooling is done in between the rolls direct cooling is done in between the rolls with the help of water spray or air mist. So, this is important to remember that ferrostatic pressure will always try to bulge the solid shell and the support is done by the rolls this is very important these are the support rolls. So, ferrostatic pressure is increasing as you are going down because you know because of the height is increasing till solidification is complete after that there is no ferrostatic pressure. So, the possibility of bulging will be there till solidification is complete, but as you are going down that means, as you are doing more and more secondary cooling what is happening just look at here the shell thickness is increasing. So, the shell thickness increasing the temperature of the shell is also coming down. So, the strength of the shell is increasing. So, it can withstand the ferrostatic pressure to a larger and larger extent as you are coming down. Ferrostatic pressure is increasing as you are coming down, but the resistance to the ferrostatic pressure is also increasing because the shell is becoming thicker, temperature of the shell is coming down that is why the strength of the shell also is becoming more. Strength of the shell will depend on what I, I have discussed is earlier. It depends on the thickness as well as the temperature. If the temperature goes down that means, the strength of the shell is going up. If the thickness goes up then also the strength goes up. So, the shell is now withstanding the ferrostatic pressure and the incidence of bulging will be less provided we do enough secondary cooling. We do enough secondary cooling so that we have adequate shell thickness and the temperature is such that the strength of the shell can withstand strength of the shell as well as the thickness of the shell together they can withstand the bulging the ferrostatic pressure is there, but the resistance to the ferrostatic pressure is also there by the shell because it is becoming thicker as you are coming down it is the shell is having lower and lower temperature the temperature is also coming down the strength of the shell is also increasing consequently. So, this is very important to understand. So, what I have shown to you in between the support rolls you have nozzle those nozzles are spraying water on the strand. So, please remember the cooling is done either directly by the water which is being sprayed or is a combination of air and water which is called a mist cooling. Incidentally mist cooling can give you more uniform cooling. So, in one is intensity of cooling another is uniformity of cooling. So, if you have uniformity cooling then only the shell temperature will come down from here to as you are going down in a uniform fashion like whatever shell temperature here suddenly it should not decrease I will come to it later on if there is a sudden decrease then there is a lot of stress and strain generation in the shell. So, there is a possibility of shell cracking crack formation. So, it should temperature should come down, but it should come down uniformly in a systematic manner. Suddenly there should not be a too much of cooling is not good too less of cooling is also not good because the shell is not increasing adequately if you have too less cooling. If you have too much of cooling shell is increasing in thickness, 
but that it is not uniform. There is a possibility of reheating whenever the cooling is not uniform. Somewhere cooling is more, somewhere cooling is less. So, whenever there is a cooling is less, there is a possibility of reheating. So, uniformity of cooling is very important. Systematic cooling is very important. Please remember this. Now, let us see what is happening when you are impinging water from the nozzle on the surface of the strand. What is happening? I have explained to you earlier that in between the rolls, these blue things are water spray here and the nozzles are here. So, they are spraying water on the surface of the strand and the thickness of the strand slowly will increase the temperature of the strand will slowly come down. So, that is the purpose of secondary cooling, but just see what is happening. The surface is cooling means what is happening? This is the water level, water spray. So, it is coming on the and impinging on the surface. These are the rolls, these are the two rolls. In between the rolls, I have told you there is a provision for surface cooling with the, the so nozzle is somewhere here, the through which water is this is the water spray, this blue one is spraying on the surface of the strand. So, what is happening? The surface is becoming cooler inside it is relatively hot. So, if the cooling is non uniform there is a possibility of strain formation. So, now you see when during the cooling there is a compressive stress this cooling means the surface is compressive, but here if there is a possibility of reheating that means, if it is not uniform suddenly it is temperature is more or somewhere by the side of it uh, the temperature is relatively less. So, that means, in between there is if there is a temperature gradient there is a possibility of surface reheating because inside is hot. What is inside the strand? It is molten steel. So, inside is hot the heat source is inside with the help of water nozzle with the help of water which is impinging on the surface you are trying to cool. As I am again and again telling it should be sufficient, so that it the shell thickness increases the temperature of the shell also comes down, but it should be uniform suddenly there should not be a temperature increase or decrease. If the if it is not adequate then if there is a surface reheating then you see what is happening there is a tensile stress on the surface here. This red indicates that the surface is getting reheated temperature is increasing. Why it is increasing? Because inside the temperature is relatively high it is molten steel the source of heat is inside. So, the surface can be reheated if there is not proper cooling or improper cooling or non uniform cooling. So, in case of surface reheating there is a tensile stress and there is a possibility of reheating crack. Sometimes there will be formation of surface crack due to reheating. Reheating means there is a tensile stress is getting generated and whenever there is a tensile stress there is a possibility of crack you know on the strand surface. So, surface cooling it is creating compressive stress on the surface, but reheating is creating tensile stress and there is a possibility of reheating crack, crack due to reheating of the surface. So, we have to be very careful the strand quality it depends on how much of thermal loads you are impinging on the surface. What how much of uh, water you are impinging on the surface that is creating the thermal load that is creating whether cooling or reheating for cooling there is a compressive force for reheating there is a tensile force and which can generate surface crack. So, why there is reheating? Initially there is cooling and then if the cooling suddenly comes down then the source of heat inside that means, the molten steel would result in reheating of the surface. The heat will flow from the inside to the outside. Heat should flow from inside to outside always is it not that that is the way you are taking off the heat. 
but if the cooling channel is missing somewhere. So, there is a possibility of surface reheating and because of that there can be crack which is called reheating cracks on the surface. So, this is one important thing we have to remember that if the cooling is not proper and not uniform, it not systematic, it should cooling should from top to bottom it should slowly come down in a uniform way. If there is a discrete cooling or somewhere there is a you know cooling is stopped and then there is a reheating and suddenly you have to increase in cooling all these are not desirable will lead to surface stress, surface strain and in the in the consequence there will be generation of surface cracks. Now, let us look at another aspect, look at here this red one is the nozzle. So, from nozzle what is happening? This blue is the water jet which is coming in and, and this one is the surface of the strand. So, the water jet is impinging on the surface. So, what is happening? There is a temperature drop on the surface. Because of this water jet impingement, there is a temperature drop. Please remember temperature of the solid shell will come down on the surface. How much it will come down? That depends on what? That depends on first the amount of water it is being spread definitely. More the water, more the higher the velocity of the water, more is the possibility of temperature drop. But let us assume the same amount of water at same velocity at same flow rate is falling on the surface. Now, the temperature drop then in the strand in the shell will depend on what? It depends on the conductivity of the steel. If the steel is very conductive, then the temperature drop will be relatively more. If the carbon content is less, the same thing is being shown here. Low carbon content, you know, low carbon content means the conductivity is better. Iron conductivity is higher as you are increasing carbon, you are going to higher and higher carbon steel, conductivity is coming down. So, at low carbon steel conductivity is higher that is why temperature drop is high. You can may go up to even 30, 300 degree centigrade temperature drop. I am talking of a particular situation and for high carbon steel say when you are casting 1 percent carbon steel ball bearing steel say it has about 1 percent carbon conductivity is poor. So, there temperature drop will be only 100 degree centigrade same amount of water is falling suppose, then also this is the situation. So, what I have to do? You have to control the amount of water which is falling on the different type of steel depending on the conductivity. If you have a low carbon steel that means, it is conductive, you can afford to use more amount of water, more amount of water will not cause any problem because the conductivity is good, temperature drop is quite well, quite appreciable, okay, it is not a problem. But the temperature drop is low when you have a high carbon content, you have a poor conductor, poor conductivity of the steel. So, in that case if you use too much of water, there is a possibility of crack formation. Why? Because it is a poor conductor, so even if you are using more water, it cannot you know um, uh, result in temperature drop. So, there is a possibility of stress formation. So, that is the thing you have to remember that the surface to temperature drop depends on conductivity. So, it is not same for low carbon and high carbon steel. So, you have to be careful about how much of water you are using. One is the bulging I have told you earlier to take care of bulging you need more water for low carbon steel you know I have told you. Also you need from the bulging point of view you want more water for high carbon steel because, because of segregation the shell thickness is less. So, the probability of bulging is more, but here there is a limit 
you cannot go to very high intensity of cooling for high carbon steel because there will be a problem of crack formation due to poor conductivity. High carbon steel means poor conductivity. So, even if you are using more temperature uh, more water temperature drop is not you cannot get very high temperature drop there is a possibility of that is why there is a possibility of crack formation due to poor conductivity. So, this is very important to remember. Now, let us see how the cooling is taking place. Earlier I have shown you only, I am just showing one nozzle you know. Here also I was showing just one nozzle, but this is a section. But actually if you look at the actual you know cast product, so how what it can be? It can be a it can be a slab, it can be you know a billet or a bloom or it can be a round. So, if it is a slab then just see how you can cool it. You have to cool the whole broad surface I have told you. So, how it is done? It is done with the help of a series of nozzles. One particular location you have a series of nozzles place one after another. The purpose is to spray water on the whole broad surface of the slab. So, this is one nozzle, this is another nozzle, another, another. So, it is showing four nozzles. So, what is each nozzle, what every each nozzle is doing? It is spraying water in this fashion. So, there should be an overlap. Why? Otherwise, what is happening? You just see here some more water is there. So, if there is no overlap, what is going to happen? Here the amount of water will be less. So, if the amount of water is less means there is a possibility of higher temperature on this region. So, overlap is a must. So, the nozzles are arranged one after another in such a fashion that there will be some overlap. This helps in maintaining uniform temperature on the surface. You see here on the rounds also there is overlap. So, that there is uniform cooling throughout the surface, uniform cooling throughout the surface. Now, just see here I am showing what happens if one nozzle is not functioning. This nozzle, the location of this nozzle is non functional say. It is not functioning means what? It has got choked. So, that means water is not coming out of it. So, what is happening? This nozzle is working, this nozzle is working, this nozzle is working. So, these areas are getting sufficient water, this area is getting sufficient water, but what about this area? It is no water is falling because the nozzle is choked. So, water spray is absent. So, what is the problem? You see this it indicates by the red uh, color here. That means, the temperature of the slab at this location because there is no spray temperature is more. Here the temperature is less that is why it is indicated by a you know maroon color. Here the temperature is more because there is no water is falling not by design, but by a problem nozzle has got choked. So, water jet is not impinging on the surface of the slab. So, what is the problem? Problem is no water here. So, increase in temperature. So, at locations where there is no water impingement, there will be increase in temperature compared to adjacent locations, whether it is slab or bloom or billet or you know whatever, whatever it is rounds. So, this is a problem. So, malfunctioning of nozzles due to choking or something else will create non-uniform cooling somewhere the water spray is absent. So, there is a problem of water, the water is not impinging on this area. So, the temperature of the slab in this area or temperature of the round you see here same thing is happening here this particular nozzle is not functioning. Other nozzles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all are functioning this is not functioning. So, what is happening? This area you see 
that blue blue indicates the water cooling. So, no water presence is there because it is choked water is not falling on the round surface. So, what is the problem? Problem is compared to the adjacent areas of the round this particular area where there is no water falling water impingement temperature is more. You get the point here non functioning of nozzle due to choking or other reasons you have a non uniform cooling. So, wherever water is not falling temperature will be more in that area and this will create non uniform cooling which is not desirable. There is a stress generation you see here the temperature is more adjacent area temperature is less. So, what is the problem here as I have told you there is a possibility of tensile stress formation or strain formation. So, there is a possibility of reheating crack in these areas. Why the temperature is more here because inside temperature is high because it is molten steel it is getting properly cooled in other areas. So, temperature is of the shell is less here there is no cooling because of not because of intentional you know design, but because it is non functioning somehow the shell uh, the straw, you know, nozzle is not working. So, water is not falling. So, the shell temperature in this area is high. So, there is a possibility of crack formation there is a possibility of reheating crack formation. So, what have, what I have explained here in slab same thing might happen for bloom or round as well. So, now let us come to billet or bloom. So, now what happens here is as I have told you for billet or bloom of sub square section cooling has to be uniform on all the sections. Here you see cooling I am showing only cooling on the broad faces because the broad face maximum heat will be taken out through the broad face because of the surface area is more. So, cooling is have to be more more uniform on the broad face in round of course, it is round means it is a uniform section. So, naturally cooling also have to be uniform. So, that is why throughout the surface it should be uniform. So, the array of the nozzle should be such that the surface area should get uniform cooling uniform amount of water then only you get uniform cooling and the temperature distribution also should be uniform throughout the surface. But look at the position of billet or bloom what is happening here we have four surfaces in one surface here you see this nozzle is has started malfunctioning. When casting started let us assume that we have checked before casting is started normally we check whether all nozzles are functioning or not through cold check you can uh, put water start you know flowing water should be allowed to flow in all the nozzle to check whether all nozzles are performing ok or not. But during the process of casting say some somehow one nozzle has started malfunctioning due to choking or some other reason. So, what is the problem three surfaces this 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 nozzles are ok they are getting adequate amount of water. So, temperature also is coming down systematically this surface no water is there nozzle has started malfunctioning. So, there is no water on this surface all three other surfaces there was a water which is indicated by the blue regions here that means, water is falling uniform water on the three surfaces here you see no water or it might happen it has partially got choked that means, the amount of water which is falling on the surface is less that is also not desirable. Here what I am showing is an extreme situation no water at all on one surface. Here what I have shown is no water at all on particular area totally non functional, but it might happen partially choked. So, amount of water here will be less then also there is a problem then also temperature in this area is relatively high. So, there is a possibility of reheating crack the possibility of tensile stress and consequently reheating crack. So, here you see what is happening one particular surface is not having any water at all any cooling at all or maybe having less cooling. So, what is the problem you, want, you you can tell what is the problem the shape will change it will no longer remain 
a square. It will the, change, the shape will change because one surface the cooling is less. The three surfaces cooling are more. So, what is the problem? Here there will be a tensile stress generation. So, this surface will try to become large in the process it will pull these two surfaces. So, it will become the, this surface with the dimension is more this surface the dimension will be less so it will become a rhombohedral sort of shape. So, in, in place of square it will become rhomb, rhombus sort of thing the section. So, which is not desirable we want a good shape also of the product not only we want a crack free stress free surface we also want a good shape. The, the shape here will change because of non uniformity of killing, cooling. So, you see what problems are getting generated here because of non functional you know nozzle water almost nothing is there or even it is less. So, it is a non uniform cooling this area where it is showing relatively red is more that means, the temperature is more there is a possibility of reheating and possibility of crack generation. Here on the surface of the round because of non functional you know what is that called this is not functioning properly this spray is not happening here at all the nozzle is not functioning properly. So, the temperature here is more compared to the adjacent areas. So, tensile stress is generated on that particular area. So, it might also lead to change in shape it will no longer even circle it will become elliptical which is again a problem we want a round, but in the process what is happening it is becoming sort of elliptical because a tensile stress is getting generated here. So, it will try to pull it this two way. So, this da this da will be more compared to this da. So, this will become elliptical the shape is changing there is a possibility of crack generation reheating crack generation because of this tensile stress. Here also the shape is changing there is a possibility of stress non uniformity. So, what I have tried to explain is that how secondary cooling is done with the help of nozzles and if all nozzles are not functioning properly there is a problem of non uniform cooling consequently there will be a problem of non uniform stress on the surface of the cast product whether it is slab or round or bullet or bloom. So, what is the consequence? Consequence is there may be a possibility of crack generation reheating crack as I have told you if suddenly one particular area is relatively having high temperature. So, there is a possibility that because of reheating so it is a stress generation tensile stress generation there will be a crack generation. Also the shape is also going to change. So, not only there will be a crack generation due to stress generation, but also because of non uniform stress generation the shape of the product also is going to change. So, this is going to affect the quality of the product. So, secondary cooling that is why is very important in mold what you are doing is a primary cooling with the help of casting powder you are getting a rate certain rate of cooling the heat transfer is controlled by the what type of powder you are using because the powder will melt and give you the slag the nature of the slag how much is solid how much is liquid will dictate what is the rate of heat transfer. So, the heat transfer in mold is controlled by casting powder type of casting powder but heat transfer in the secondary cooling zone is controlled by amount intensity and uniformity of cooling whether it is water cooling or by air most cooling. So, what is important is the amount of water uniformity of water and intensity of cooling all three are important amount means intensity I am talking of distribution of water basically will give you the amount uh, uh, rather the uniformity of cooling. So, uniformity of cooling is you get by proper distribution of water. 
So, um, if the you know nozzles are not properly, I will come to that subsequently. Here I am only showing overlapping is a must. If you do not have overlapping in this particular areas, you have less cooling and the possibility of reheating cracks. So, overlapping is very important, nozzle should be placed in such a location and there you know the profile of the water spray should be such that there is overlapping and all should function properly, you know, non functioning of nozzle creates non uniform cooling and subsequent you know, problem of crack generation or, or and shape problem. Thank you very much.